Yes, it's the year. Current year. And we're still talking about whether homeopathic medicine actually works. And the final answer is... No. All right, that's our show, everybody. We spend $6.2 billion a year on placebos that do nothing. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Wait, billion? We're not talking about just one million dollars. But six billion dollars. Six billion dollars on nothing pills. There's gotta be more to this story, right? Spoiler alert, yes. And at the end of this video, I'll tell you why it's a bigger problem than you think. So let's take a trip back through time to the very beginning. Homeopathy was dreamed up by 18th century German physician Christian Friedrich Samuel Hafferhardt, who graduated from medical school in 1779. But med school back then was just a little different than it is today. Time for your leeches now. You might take classes like how to suck out foul humors with leeches or the healing powers of mercury and radium. What they didn't teach about was viruses and bacteria because those hadn't been discovered yet. Science was pretty new and competing with a lot of other fine ideas, like exorcism. We have found the witch, might we burn, huh? Burn! So seeing a doctor back then was just as likely to poison you or maim you than it was to actually help. But along came... Friedrich Honnehapa... <coughs> Friedrich longed for gentle medicine that wasn't so heinous. He had two great ideas which he'd pulled out of his anus. First, that the cure should also be the disease. He called this the law of similarities. The medicine should be the thing that made you sick. So if you have a tummy ache, just take some arsenic. Oh no, you might say, that's a bad solution. So his second idea was lots and lots of dilution. Just take one drop and with a stirring motion, mix it into some water the size of the ocean. Dilute it until there's nothing left and the placebo effect takes care of the rest. Thank thee, thank thee, thank thee. And that's homeopathy in a nutshell. It's like diet snake oil, now with 100% less snake and oil and everything. Because while there have been some cases of people being poisoned by improperly made batches, like whoops, they forgot to dilute the arsenic, normally homeopathic remedies are made like this. First, take one drop of the bad stuff, something like arsenic or deadly nightshade or mercury, and mix it into a bottle of water. Just shake it up and then take one drop of that dilution and mix it into another bottle, and one drop of that, mix it into another bottle, and one drop of that, and mix it into another bottle, and at this point, you'd probably say there's nothing left, and I'd say almost. If you do the math, you have to repeat this 16 times until you've gotten rid of every single molecule, but homeopaths don't stop there. They keep going to a minimum of 30 times, or 30C to use the lingo, sometimes up to 200 times, which is ridiculous. They're just diluting pure water with more water at that point. But they do it anyway, because good old Freedy reasoned thusly. The more you dilute a poison, the less bad it is for you. And if it's less bad, then it must be more good. So more dilute medicine is better. This new learning amazes me, Sir Bedivere. Explain again how sheep's bladders may be employed to prevent earthquakes. So that's it. They bottle that water or stick it in sugar pills and sell it as a cure for anything from colds to cancer. Which brings us to the question of why this stuff is sold at all. Because you can walk into any drugstore today and see bottles of homeopathics right next to real medicine with deceptive packaging that hides the word homeopathic in tiny letters underneath all the false claims about what it definitely does not do. Why does the FDA allow this? Isn't it their job to make sure medicine bottles contain, you know, medicine? Well, it turns out homeopathy caught an extremely lucky break back when the FDA was commissioned in 1938. One of the senators who wrote the legislation was a big fan of theirs, and he slipped in a big fat loophole, which basically gave them a free pass to regulate themselves. No clinical trials, no accountability. Homeopathic medicine is just whatever they say it is in that big book of theirs. Now, this didn't actually cause much of a stir at the time. People mostly saw homeopathy as harmless if they thought about it at all. It did make a brief comeback in Germany because a certain spiritually enlightened dictator was really into astrology and alternative medicine and stuff. Niemand muss in Deutschland kommen und muss sagen, den Frieden wollen wir. He was a holistic kind of guy. He wanted whole earth domination. But even though homeopathy was supposed to make his soldiers invincible, for some reason it didn't win him the war. Huh, maybe he should have diluted it more. 
Anyway, by the 1950s, science was successfully eradicating serious diseases like polio, while homeopathy had still accomplished pretty much nothing. The number of practitioners in the United States dwindled to like 70 or so, and it seemed destined to just fade away into obscurity. But then, the 70s happened. Suddenly, science wasn't cool anymore, and people started clamoring for alternative modalities like healing crystals and tarot cards. Everything ancient was groovy, baby! Like Chinese medicine and an ancient Indian practice called yoga. Homeopathy rode that wave and rebranded itself, not as outdated foolishness anymore, but ancient wisdom. It was marketed and sold by New Age retailers, and thanks to that handy FDA loophole, eventually made its way under the shelves of every drugstore in the country. And to this day, it's being pushed by people like this. We're going to cover the natural therapy called homeopathy, because I use it with every single patient. Now this pleasant looking woman calls herself a doctor, yet doesn't have any kind of medical degree. Instead, she's something called a naturopath. Uh, you may be wondering what a naturopathic doctor is. Yes, we were, so we looked it up. It turns out a naturopathic doctor is anyone who passes a multiple choice test and, and that's it. Hey, you know, I've passed one of those and it got me this nifty driver's license. So since we're both equally qualified, let's discuss this doctor to doctor about how it actually works. The one biggest thing that I really want to emphasize is how unique and holistic homeopathy is. Well, I like unique and holistic as much as the next dictator, but how does it work exactly? We all know when we dice an onion, our eyes water, our nose runs. Well, in small doses of onion called Allium Sepa, homeopathically, it's actually indicated for colds. Everything sounds so darn fancy in Latin, doesn't it? Fruity had no clue what caused the common cold. The virus wouldn't be discovered for another 150 years, but since colds make your eyes water, and onions make your eyes water, he wondered if somehow colds and onions were somehow related? Good question. The answer is definitely not. Okay, what else? So homeopathic coffee is indicated for insomnia. Sure, the opposite of insomnia is coffee. Right. The truth is she's actually putting her best foot forward here with two of the least insane sounding similars. I have here a list from the Encyclopedia of Homeopathy, other actual homeopathic remedies and what they're supposed to treat. Poison sumac to treat itchy skin. Quicksilver to treat sluggishness, I guess because it's got quick in the name. Marijuana to treat disordered mental states and food cravings. Wow. Peyote to treat losing track of time. Double wow. Chili peppers for feeling too peppery. That one's just goofy. Baking soda to treat cravings for baked goods. Oh my God. Gold to treat depression and a sense of worthlessness. Get it? Because gold is like the opposite of being worthless. Uh, nitroglycerin to treat hot flashes. You can't make this stuff up, except that's exactly what he did. Oh, and Spanish fly poison, which in the 18th century was thought to be an aphrodisiac to treat excess libido. Crikey! I've lost my mojo! You know, you kind of got to admire the creativity of some of these free associations, thinking that nitroglycerin can treat hot flashes because an explosion is kind of like a hot flash. It's like something straight out of Monty Python. What do you burn apart from witches? Wood! Good! <laughs> What also floats in water? Very small rocks, churches, lead, lead, a duck. Exactly. Now, for any information, if you're confused or still unclear about anything, feel free to contact me. I love questions. She'd love to take our questions. That's why the comments are turned off. But in case your question is, what the hell makes you think any of this works? The answer, of course, is not studies or data or anything sciencey like that, but Anecdotes. Lots and lots and lots of anecdotes. Like this one. Allergy remedy. This is seriously amazing. I started taking it four times a day. Uh, just to point one thing out, that's 20% alcohol. Like 40 proof. Like almost as strong as straight liquor. So yeah, a few shots of that definitely will help you unwind after a tough day. Okay, but seriously. It's not hard to see why thousands of people like this woman swear by homeopathy. You go see someone like Dr. Lana, who seems like a genuinely nice person, like a friendly flight attendant. 
They've got minimal medical training, like first aid and CPR and how to put on an oxygen mask, but their main job is just to be friendly and serve you coffee. The homeopathic coffee. She's kind and she's empathetic and you leave feeling heard and understood. Then you go home and have a few shots of that 20% alcohol medicine and you will feel better. Whoa, she turned me into a newt. A newt. I got better. Okay, as promised, here's why I think this is all more than just a little bit of harmless fun. See, the problem isn't just that it's fake medicine that doesn't work. And in case I wasn't clear about this, it doesn't! According to the largest meta-analysis in the world, conducted in 2015 by the Australian National Health and Medical Research Council, which concluded that homeopathics have an actual success rate of zero compared to a placebo. But it's not just the billions of wasted consumer dollars, or even the fact that using this stuff makes people less likely to get real treatments so they stay sick longer. And it isn't because it was popular with Nazis, although that's weird, or the accidental poisonings caused by improperly made batches, which is tragically still happening today. According to a PubMed article from 2022, three people recently got arsenic poisoning. One of them died after taking a homeopathic remedy to prevent COVID-19. Yes, people have been taking homeopathic arsenic instead of getting vaccinated. And I think that points to the biggest problem here. In order to justify their existence and keep those billions flowing, the homeopathic industry pushes insidious lies. According to them, science isn't just proving them wrong with facts and data. No, science is a conspiracy against them. Like that meta-analysis from Australia, Homeopaths are accusing the researchers of malfeasance and demanding the entire report be retracted because, well, I'll let their spokesperson tell you why. If they're saying there's no reliable evidence, what was their definition of a reliable trial? What they mean is that a trial has to have a minimum of 150 people in it, and it has to have a quality score on the JDAD scale, which only goes from one to five of five. You heard right. That report tossed out low quality studies with small sample sizes or with no control group. That's totally unfair. To which the National Health and Medical Research Council replied. <laughs> but all this conspiracy mongering, pushing fake treatments and undermining public health agencies takes its toll on people's lives. Frontline ER and ICU doctors say every false medical claim and conspiracy theory makes their jobs that much tougher. It takes time away from the work that we could be doing to actually save patients or create new science. It's gotten so bad that the United Nations and the World Health Organizations have both declared an infodemic. We're fighting an infodemic. Fake news spreads faster and more easily than this virus and it's just as dangerous. So here we are. Back in Freedy's day, people died because effective medicines hadn't been invented yet. And he tried to do something about that. It didn't work, but by all accounts, he had good intentions, I think. But today, we live in a world where effective treatments and vaccines do exist, but people refuse to take them because of lies pushed by his followers. And I have a serious question for any homeopaths who might be watching. Do you think your founder would have wanted that? Wouldn't a man who worked his entire life to improve medicine want, you know, improved medicine, like what we have today, instead of keeping everyone stuck in the 18th century? I think it's time to say goodbye to homeopathy for good. Now this one has to go on your face. <laughs> <laughs>